there's a component of what we do which is uh, the technology of aircraft design. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of stuff is happening in the unmanned air vehicle side. We also do work um, with colleagues in, uh, in more traditional aircraft design. Uh, they're a very interesting project uh, that's been going on for a few years for NASA, which is trying to look at designing an airplane which would uh, reduce environmental impact by a significant amount. In particular, uh, the target was to reduce fuel burn by 75%. Um, and uh, one of the designs that came out of the system, we call it the D8 design, is a very interesting uh, mix of the configuration of the airplane um, and some of the new technologies, which appear to be able to get to targets like about a 75% fuel burn. Um, some of the basic things are uh, the airplane is what we call a double bubble. So um, it, as you may know, the uh, aircraft fuselages are typically cylinders and, and the reason why you do that is because that's the most efficient shape to hold the pressure. The pressure inside of an airplane uh, normally has to be greater than the pressure outside. So that pressure vessel is, is structurally efficient if it's a tube. Now um, one of the things you can do if you want to have a shape other than a tube is you can put two tubes together. So what we do is do what we call double bubble, two tubes right next to each other. That gives you essentially a wide body interior, a two aisle interior, um, but, uh, but doesn't have to be that, uh, that large. So you don't have to get the full, uh, full big circumference. So it's more efficient that way. Um, what we then do is, is use the fuselage itself as a lifting surface. So that becomes part of the wing. Um, we slow the airplane down a little bit turns out that the Mach numbers we typically fly in commercial airplanes now around 0.8 um, are such that you, you have to, you have um, the speed, you start to exceed the speed of sound at certain places over the wing. And the way we, that gives you a lot of drag. The way we traditionally fix that is by sweeping the wings. So most jet aircraft today have swept wings. Um, if you slow down from Mach 0.80 to about 0.76, 0.74, you actually don't have to sweep the wings. Um, by not sweeping the wings, you can have a much more structurally uh, and um, aerodynamically efficient wing. So it, it would have a long slender wing, uh, slight, fly slightly slower. We, now, of course, there's questions about, do you, is it a big deal to fly slower? In some of the studies we've done, um, it indicates because if you really look at what the, the, the time difference would be over a typical flight, it's really not that significant because today we spend a lot of time in the airplane taxiing out due to air traffic control delays and whatever. So slowing down a few tenths of Mach number really would only change, for example, a typical domestic U.S. flight by about 10 minutes. So if you can get a significant uh, improvement in fuel efficiency and reduction in environmental impact, we think that that might be very attractive in the future. Um, the, another thing that's done in this aircraft design is uh, we mount the engines in the tail. And what that does, that actually, in a very clever way, so the, um, what happens is the front of the fuselage actually uh, becomes the inlet for the engines. The, um, on a typical surface, uh, the air near the, the surface on a, a fuselage or something like that uh, will start to slow down and become turbulent. It's what we call a turbulent boundary layer. Um, w when, when the airplane's gone by, that's left as turbulence in the atmosphere, which is essentially drag. So the airplane flying through that created that turbulence. What we do in this design uh, is instead of having the air just go out as drag, it goes into the engine. And that has two benefits. It turns out that Normally, uh, at, at the typical flight speeds we have, you have to slow the air down to, before it goes into the engine in a typical engine inlet. In this case, we've already slowed down the uh, air, so we don't get the drag on the engine inlet. Um, and because that turbulent boundary layer goes into the engine, the engine essentially eats that turbulent boundary layer. And so we reduce the drag there. Um, so it, it, it's a, a clever integration of the uh, of the uh, engine and the uh, aircraft design itself. Um, there are some challenges that we're working on right now. One is that 
you now no longer have nice smooth flow going into the engine. So uh, there is a problem that potential that you'll have problem with the engine. So we're working with Pratt and Whitney to see um, uh, to, to address that issue. And there are also some problems um, in the sense that from a safety standpoint, we have the engines very close to each other in the tail of the airplane. If you were to have a um, a failure of the engine, what we call an uncontained engine failure, so a part basically flies out. The concern is because the engines are so close to each other that that the part from one engine might damage the other engine and you would lose several engines uh, at the same time, which of course would be bad. So we're, we're sort of working through uh, those issues right now. Um, the airplane, <coughs> uh, all tuned up, looks like with Today's technology would give you about a 45% reduction in fuel burn um, for a 737 scale airplane. Um, with uh, new technologies, new materials that we expect in the next uh, 15 or 20 years, uh, it looks like we would get about the 75% fuel efficiency that we're looking for.